Okay. So uh, varieties, as I said, in this case means minor numbers, uh, things that are different than the normal, the common stamp. That was an italic number with a lowercase suffix. This is all the items in my collection and all the items in my collection that uh, are, are of that type. Um, I was a specialist in this area for about five or six years, and that this is the results of the, uh, the odd stuff I accumulated. It includes everything listed in these four catalogs. I think I gave a presentation uh, a number of months ago about the cross-listing catalog I prepared showing all the varieties and all the different numbers for all the different catalogs. So there are perforation varieties, overprint errors and varieties, and color varieties. Uh, I don't have any perforation varieties, and uh, the color varieties that are listed at the end, I'm not showing them. So I had an album that I made on white, white ace pages. It was mostly made with a letter set, dry transfer lines and letters. Most of the pages were only partially filled with amounts and even less in terms of the variety stamps because they're, if you'll see, I will mention they're very extensive and I only have a few. I used the, the native name of the country rather than the catalog name. Uh, in part, I provided labels saying what the variant is on the page. Uh, later on, I started making a number of pages with a computer. Given this, most of these, they, they, they start South Africa and then hyphen uh, and the name of the individual country, but British Betuana, which became part of South Africa, they don't list that way. And Scott lists all these countries still separately, but they list British Betuana land, which became part of South Africa under Betuana land which also includes in the same numbering scheme, the Betuana Island Protectorate, which is a physically separate country. So it's a very strange behavior of the Scott catalog. One of the things I found in going through and looking at these carefully is they don't follow a, a specific rule about what's the regular and what's the variety. Sometimes a, a variety is a separate number. Uh, sometimes the font change each font will get a specific uh, set of regular numbers. Sometimes it will be uh, varieties with the, with the lowercase letter suffix. And it's, it's inconsistent, and both of them do this, and it's not clear why they're doing all this stuff. Now, here's an example of one of the letter set pages. Sweet Africa Republic, South Africa Republic, was the original name of Transvaal, but no one lists it as such. Uh, notice that there are headings here. Notice there's inverted surcharge. This particular item has an inverted surcharge variety. Uh, this particular set has some imperforates, some tet -besh, and some color varieties. This is one of the few pages where uh, everything was in place and all the labels were, were done as well. So here's the first item. <clears throat> this is from British Betuana land, and this is the variety of curved tail two. You'll see that, notice the curve down here on the uh, the two, it tilts down a little bit. That's an unusual problem. Obviously, like most of the other things we'll be seeing here, overprints, they didn't necessarily have uh, all of the letters uh, in the exact same font, or they had some who were misformed like this one was. So you get one or two stamps off the page, uh, the sheet that were printed the wrong way. And you'll see that this is a, fair, a fairly expensive stamp. Um, and uh, most places, the Gibbons and the Scott prices are actually quite similar. Uh, Gibbons about the same price, but in pounds rather than in dollars. Back in the old days, that was quite a bit difference in price. But these days, a uh, pound isn't worth much more than a dollar, so it's uh, surprisingly similar. And this uh, is, is a used variety, so it's a uh, $180 catalog stamp. And there is also a color variety this uh, of this 25. Here's Cape of Good Hope. This has as obvious as the inverted surcharge variety. Um, this is a uh, quite expensive mint. Not so bad uh, used. And there are two other varieties of this. I think there's a double over double uh, overprint and, and things like that. Here we indicate the Greek will and West. Greek will and last is that is sold as told as a, a very uh, Boring country to collect. 
It's basically these Cape of Good Oak stamps with the letter G printed on it in various fonts and with various errors. And there's, like I say, there's each almost every uh, stamp has three or four different varieties of the overprint, inverted, double, double, one inverted, and so on. This is the double overprint. Uh, are there uh, forgeries of these overprints? Yes, they're definitely forgeries. It's obviously, you get a, a capital G in some typeface that's close to what they're really, it's very easy to make a forgery, yeah. Uh, here's Crickle Atlas 88B. Again, this case, an in inverted rather than a double overprint. And there are three other varieties of this particular stamp. Here's an in inverted that's hardly seen. The, the, the G is up here. It's, a, it's an italic G rather than a straight G. Okay, Natal, uh, this is a page where I have most of the stamps that were involved. The stuff down here with the long P, the long T, and the long A, and the word postage, I'll, I'll, I'll expand this in a moment so you can get a better look at it. These are not listed in Scott as varieties. It's just in a note. Gibbons, however, lists them, and, and this is, this is a, uh, these are the combinations of two P and A, P and T, and uh, T and A. And then there's a stamp that has all three of them long. You see one of these up here also has all three of them long. And Scott says they're, they're twice as valuable as the regular stamp. And the prices are quite varied here. You can get one of these mint ones for $3, but there are others here that are over $2,000 for mint. Strangely, the used, you'll see in a couple cases, the used stamps are more expensive than the mint ones, obviously because uh, they're, they're scarce and... and People who collected these stamps when they bought the sheets or whatever at this post office, they looked for these varieties and kept them. And uh, other people just mailed them off and they, they got lost uh, in time. So it's very hard to make out, but this is definitely an E rather than an A. <laughs> Notice here, here's the P, which is long, the T, which has, and the A, which has a long uh, extension as well. And then here are all the combinations. This is the P. And the T, this is the P and the A. This is a T and the A. This is a P, T, and A. So there are a variety of uh, things here. Uh, Orange Free State, this is like uh, the South African Republic. This was the name it was known at before the British took it over. They changed it to Orange River Colony. In this particular case, I have a very good two-volume work on these stamps. And there'll be, you'll see, if we go through them, there are a whole bunch of notes relating to what this uh, thing has to say about them. The second volume is devoted almost entirely to the, the stamps printed during the Boer War when the British moved in and overprinted the original stamps. And it's extremely complicated. It's, it's a wonderful volume. They have located almost all of the existing multiples of and sheets of these stamps and have studied them uh, exhaustively. And they go into the detail about, um, there were a bunch of different settings of the overprints. And they will tell you how they deduced which which was first and uh, what, what the various uh, varieties that appear on each overprint were, and they're different. Okay, this is, this is a, a typical stamp of the Orange Free State. They, all of the stamps issued by the Orange Free State itself were um, of this format, this design, printed printed typographically in London, uh, and all the overprints were printed in uh, in Bloemfontein, the capital of Orange Free State. The only difference between the various values is the color and the indication of the value. And uh, another thing to notice, you'll see in the tree here, there are little oranges in the tree. This was not part of the design originally. The design that was sent to London did not have oranges in it. The, the engraver decided to add them. So it was said that the, the oranges were there as a reflection of the fact that these were Dutch and to the House of Orange, the rulers of, of, of the Netherlands. But uh, that's not the case. It was just uh, something done by the uh, the engraver himself. And they, did, they didn't do it, so that's, that's the way they were. So this is supposedly a wide two. The top of the two here is supposed to be wider than most of the stamps on, on the sheet. But Buckley and Merritt have, of course, hundreds and hundreds of examples of this particular stamp. And they say, if you measure it very carefully, there really is no difference between the, the, the various widths of the top of the two. And they, they say it really isn't variety. But, but Scott and Gibbons both list it. 
and there are three other three other varieties of this particular stamp. Now, this double overprint is interesting. Um, apparently, this was done because the first overprint didn't print clearly. You can see here the top of the two is missing. That's probably the original overprint. This was not done by running it through the press again. The second overprint here was done by hand with a single single stamp, one by one. If you look in the, the Buckley and Merritt book, there are hundreds, really hundreds of varieties of this, depending on exactly which particular type fonts were used for the particular thing. Gibbons does not list all the combinations at all. It just, just says a note that, that, that they have uh, double overprints with a variety of combinations of the font. So it's, you don't, it's, it varies in the particular catalog and in the particular stamp as to how many varieties they will list and how they will, and how will they, they mention them. You'll see later with another South African Republic stamp that uh, given this, this tremendous number of varieties, it's got only a few. Now here's another double overprint. One of them is partial. You can see the D here, and this is the one and the underbar, and just the bottom of the two, in which one of them is partial. The um, main catalogs do not list these things, but the Buckley and Merritt give a considerable discussion about these particular varieties, and I happen to have this one of them. Those half things were so badly printed that they decided to uh, redo it and write the word half, half penny which is apparently the Afrikaans version of half. And I have a bunch of these varieties here. This first one here, there's no period here after the word penny. Um, and they can tell you what the sheet will look like. It's a sheet of, they, they printed these, uh, the original stamps were printed in sheets of 240, which is the standard sort of British printing. And the presses they had to do the overprint in Blomfontein were not capable of handling 240 at a time. So they had um, settings of 60 for each of the frames or 120. They can tell us that there was one, one stamp without the period in each, each sheet that was printed. This is at P-E-U-N-Y instead of penny, three times. So it's three times as, uh, as common. This one, uh, they've, they've offset the uh, the overprint enough that there's no bar appearing on this particular stamp, blocking out the, uh, you can see the only one here, there's just barely a little bar here. Well, this one, it, it's shifted enough that it doesn't print on the stamp at all. Here's here's a bar at the top. That's not listed by anybody, except Buckley and Merritt, they mentioned that this happened. And here's one with the uh, overprint inverted. Now, the interesting thing about these, the pricing is that, um, notice the, the mint stamp, which I have here is $10. The used stamp is 65 cents, but what you'll find in a couple places, the used is actually more expensive on the whole than the, the mint, because again, no one noticed these or cared about them until too late. So there are very few of the used ones still in existence. And there are 11 varieties uh, that the two catalogs, Scott and Gibbons, mentioned, but um, Buckley and Merritt, again, go through a tremendous number of, of other varieties that, that nobody lists. This is the start of the British occupation issues that were printed VRI, Victoria Regina Imperatrix. Um, and these are the first set in which the periods after VR and I are level with the bottom of the letter. So this is this is the first setting. This is how they first printed it. They had fifty thousand sheets of these uh, stamps, the regular stamps they needed to overprint. So it took them a long time, and they went through a whole bunch of different variations on the, the overprint. So there's a whole lot to collect here, often in entire sets. Scott is interesting in that there are these two color varieties listed here, the one pence and the one shilling. Gibbons does not list these. And the reason why these are blank here is these are the very expensive stamps, multiple thousands of dollars for them. And uh, Gibbons doesn't even believe that they're real. After they did this, the subsequent printings, they did with raised periods. Let me, let me, you can see here that the dots after the letters are higher than the bottom of the letters. And, and here, oh, well, I guess, yeah, this is a variety here that I haven't discussed the variety, but you can see here, this is no period after the D. 
to know period after the R and so on. So they have they have a number of different varieties within them. Um, and again, the two stamps that Scott lists that Doug Gibbons does not list. This one, I don't know what this is. It might be no dot after the I, but I'm not sure because I didn't, for some reason, I didn't get around to putting in the label and there's no, there no catalog number there under that stamp either. So I'm not sure what that is. Raised periods with a thick, the letter V is thicker than in the normal. Again, that it's, a, it's a different setting, they use slightly different font. So there's this variety. Or there's six or seven of these per sheet in those, and per pane in those particular printings. And again, there are some very expensive ones here. Then you have the wonderful variety of mixed periods in which the period, some of the periods were um, level with the bottom of the letter and others were raised. So there's a whole set of mixed periods. There are tremendous, like I said, the entire second volume of the Buckley and Marriott book is devoted to these stamps. And there are all sorts of varieties they have there that are not listed by any of the catalogs. Now, slightly later, um, they overprinted some of these over, already overprinted stamps. Uh, all they, this is uh, this is the one version that verse with a thick V. And uh, again, here that you can see that the use the use stamps are more valuable than the mint stamps. And there are three other varieties here for this particular stamp. And this is one of the uh, most expensive stamps I own. This is a, a misprint of the word postage at the bottom of the stamp. They put in an I rather than a T in one of the stamps uh, in the sheet. And it, this exists in two different watermarks. This is the cheaper of the two. And uh, it's worth about $225 a minute. Oh, there's a, you didn't notice this, Alan. This is a comma rather than a period. Oh, dear. Now, we're back to the South African Republic. Uh, this is a an overprint with two bars at top and bottom. And the variety here is in the spacing of the bars. Uh, the, rate, the most common stamps are spaced uh, 12 and a half millimeters, but Gibbons uh, lists these as 13 and a half, and Scott lists them as 14 millimeter separation. Again, the used stamps are more uh, valuable than the mint versions of the stamps. And among all of these listings, there are total, uh, there's five stamps here, but there's a total of 16 varieties. Um, uh, on the basic stamp. This one we, we've seen before. I showed this as a preview for those of you who are here. This is a, a an issue by the Orange Free State government after the British invasion during the Boer War had uh, captured the capital. And the government moved north to Petersburg and they issued these stamps in Petersburg, all of which are um, endorsed by the uh, Postmaster General. There are three basic varieties uh, of the stamp that are listed as such, both by Scott and Gibbons. It depends on the size of the P and the size of the date font. And then within that, there are these varieties here. I got this collection from uh, uh, George uh, Holshauer of the Colonial Stamp Company intact. I didn't put this together one by one buying stuff. So this is why it's a wonderfully complete set. Scott says that you don't find these stamps canceled, only CTOs. Gibbon says that, that uh, genuinely stamps, canceled stamps are very rare. Scott does not list, list these varieties that I'm showing at all. Scott, uh, however, uh, Gibbons, however, has 22 varieties, of which there are only 12 on this particular page. These are the ones that I got from the collection. And mm -hmm. like I say, this is a computer-generated page in this album, and you notice it. Here I, I I use the uh, the English version. Of the, that yeah. signature is that a, a is that a cancellation? No, it's just it's just an author. It's indicated that this is genuine stamp. I see. So it's like a control mark. Yeah, it's like a control mark. Uh -huh. So, for example, uh, instead of AFR, you can see right here that the last letter of AFR is B instead of R, and instead of Republic, it's R E B here, and so on. So there are all sorts of uh, uh, misspellings. These were these were typeset stamps, and uh, they didn't they didn't uh, get all of them on the sheet correct. And the last stamp here is a Zululand stamp. Um, Gibbons less lists the variety with the period and without the period as two separate numbers. 
Scott has the one without the period as 12, and the one with the period is 12a. So it's sort of, well, two catalogs disagree on whether this is a variety or not. And again, the U stamps are more valuable than the min stamps. And there are two other, two other varieties here. I believe there's inverted overprint and so on, which I don't have. All right, and these are just a list of the color varieties that I provided for in, in, in my pages. And again, since the pages were not completely done, this is probably only a selection of the brightest color varieties that exist. Okay, so got through that pretty quickly.